Hello, welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the previous uh, demo classes of this week, we have analyzed some sounds. Uh, we analyzed some uh, electronic uh, periodic signals and we analyzed some real sounds. And we use Audacity and uh, Sonic Visualizer, especially to look at uh, the spectrum of uh, these uh, sounds. And now in this uh, lecture, I want to uh, continue that and uh, try to use the tools that we have developed for this particular class, so the SMS tools, and uh, do uh, the DFT analysis to see if we can uh, understand uh, some sound. So let's uh, first open um, with Audacity uh, a file so we can see the overall view of the sound. Okay, so th let's take the violin uh, sound. Okay, so this is uh, a note of a violin. It's quite stable. So we can see uh, that it's a length of uh, two seconds. But we, instead of using Audacity, let's analyze it with uh, the interface of SMS tools. So let's go to the uh, models interface uh, directory and just type Python and uh, the model GUI. And uh, this uh, will open up uh, the interface. Okay, this is the interface of, uh, of the SMS tools uh, where it has all these different models that we're going to be uh, talking about. And now let's go to uh, open up uh, the violin sound and using the DFT uh, module. So we can hear uh, the violin. Okay, so we hear uh, this uh, note of the violin. And uh, in the parameters, well, let's uh, uh, choose a, a size, a portion of a sound to analyze. And for example, let's use uh, 512 we have to use a power of 2 for the FFT size um, because uh, the FFT algorithm requires that and we don't have to use the window size uh, of the same length but for now let's do that and now we have to choose where uh, we take these 512 samples let's say we choose the middle of the sound so let's uh, take in uh, second one and we compute it Okay, so this is the analysis results. So these are the 512 samples starting at second one. And then we have computed the DFT of that using the FFT algorithm. And we are displaying half of the spectrum. We are displaying the positive side because it's symmetric. So therefore the negative side uh, is not required because it has the same information so we're just plotting the positive side both for the magnitude and the phase uh, spectrum in the x-axis we are plotting uh, frequency in Hertz and so we are plotting from zero to half the sampling rate okay so the sampling rate was 44,100 so here we are plotting up to 22,050 Okay, and the amplitude in the magnitude spectrum is in decibels, as we explained. So we are showing it in dB, and the maximum amplitude is minus 20. So here we don't have a complete, uh, the signal only reach uh, 0.4, so that corresponds to minus 20 decibels, and it goes down to minus uh, 120. And the phase, we are plotting it using the unwrapping function. So instead of limiting the phase from 0 to 2 pi, we let it unwrap so that we see a much smoother uh, shape. And that's uh, going to be quite uh, good, quite useful. And then finally, out of this, we compute the inverse and uh, we compute another time domain signal. It's not the same than the input signal because we uh, have applied a window in the input signal and this is what we are seeing here this is the windowed version that is the one that is uh, basically uh, captured in the spectrum okay now let's try to see if we can understand something on the sound and typically the magnitude spectrum is the most uh, useful one here well we see things but uh, maybe we don't see what we would like 
to see which kind of visualize the harmonics of that. So this might be because this is not enough samples. We don't have enough information to visualize and separate all these frequencies. We need a bigger uh, frequency analysis. So instead of 512, let's take uh, the next power of 2, so the next FFT size, 100, 1024, and let's compute it. Okay, and now it's a little bit better, okay? So we can see, compared with uh, the, the previous one, that, uh, of course, we have taken more samples, and the magnitude spectrum uh, gives us some more uh, information. For example, here we see clearly these peaks, and this corresponds to the harmonics of the sound. So that's a quite uh, useful information. Okay, now maybe in order to see what, uh, what can we understand about the sound, let's look at another portion of the sound. Of course, as we saw, the sound is quite stable, but if we go into the, the beginning, if we zoom into the very beginning of the sound, there is a region of the attack that's a little bit different. So let's see if we can capture that difference. So let's go back to our uh, interface and let's do the same analysis, but instead of doing the analysis at time 1, let's do it at time 0. So we compute from time 0. And now, well, we see clearly that the sound is uh, maybe not as smooth as we had it during the, the middle of the sound. And what we're also seeing is that the spectrum is a little bit different. Okay, we see during the attack that maybe the harmonics are not so clear because at the beginning of the sound there is more the attack of the bow of the noise, so there is the harmonics are not so well identified whether in the middle of the sound clearly the harmonics are stronger. Instead, at the beginning there is more noise. So these irregularities that we see in the time domain waveform are captured in the spectrum by seeing all these more kind of uh, random and sort of uh, irregular shapes that we see in the spectrum. Okay, so this is the kind of things that the spectrum analysis allows us to visualize and therefore to understand. Now let's go back to the, the window that, uh, of the control parameters. Let's go back to the middle of the sound and uh, let's uh, talk about the difference between how many samples we take and the FFT size we compute. We do not have to take the same number of samples of the FFT. For example, we can take 801 samples and then zero part to the FFT size and compute the result. So, if we do that, okay, this is uh, similar to the previous uh, the analysis we did uh, at, uh, at uh, before, in which we took more samples, we took 1024, so this, uh, in now there is less samples, and the spectrum, well, they look okay both, of course, in the one that we took more samples of the input signals, we see the harmonics a little bit better than the one that we have computed now with 800 samples. But it's as smooth uh, as, uh, uh, as the previous one, so both are equally smooth. This is because the FFT size, in both cases, is uh, 1024. Okay, now uh, let's, uh, well, let's maybe get rid of the, the, the one we just computed and let's uh, uh, compute again the 1024 uh, samples, which may be the, the most useful one. And uh, now let's try to understand a little bit more about the sound by zooming into uh, the beginning where it seems that the most uh, activity and the most interesting information is. So with this uh, figure interface of Python, we can choose a rectangle. So for example, in the magnitude spectrum, we can just choose the first 5000 Hz. 
okay? And we can see uh, these uh, harmonics, the, the peaks of the first 5000 Hertz quite uh, more clearly. And we can do the same thing with the phase spectrum. Okay, so we'll take the first 5000 um, Hertz and this is the phase of uh, what correspond to these frequencies, the same frequencies. Okay, now we can start seeing other things of the sound. For example, we can see that these peaks are equally spaced and we can look at the frequency of them. Here in the lower uh, right corner, uh, it tells us where, what is the location of the X, uh, of, the, of the cursor, at the X uh, axis, and we see that it's around 240 hertz, okay, because the, the dimension is in hertz. And if we look at the next one, is around 200, uh, 480 hertz. So in fact, these are the harmonics of the sound. The first is the fundamental. So the fundamental is around 240 hertz. And this is twice the fundamental. And this will be all the multiples, the harmonic multiples of the fundamental. Okay, so that's good. So that's a way to identify the fundamental frequency. Uh, of uh, the sound. And in the phase spectrum, it's pretty nice. Basically what we are seeing the, in the corresponding frequency of the harmonics, we are seeing uh, the phase of these uh, harmonics. The phase at time zero, where we have uh, centered the analysis. So if we look here, for example, the corresponding uh, location of the first harmonic, uh, it says that it's around minus 2.8 radians because the uh, vertical axis is in radians and this is in fact the phase at time zero of this particular harmonic and we can go to the next harmonic and measure the phase or to the next harmonic so visually we can identify the magnitude and phase of the components of this sound so that's going to be uh, very important and very useful and clearly with this interface, with the SMS tools, we can zoom into the sound in ways that the, uh, the sonic visualizer or Audacity uh, was not so easy to, uh, to do. So anyway, so that's all I wanted to say. So basically, uh, we have gone through, uh, through uh, the SMS tools, uh, this uh, interface of uh, the DFT in particular, and we have analyzed a violin sound, which is available in uh, FreeSound, and we have played around a little bit with the uh, different parameters of the DFT. Okay, and uh, that's all for today. Uh, with these three demonstration classes, we have tried to, to see the different tools that we can use for analyzing the sound, visualizing the time domain, visualizing the spectrum. But of course, uh, there is much more to do. So uh, next week, we will continue and uh, we will uh, go into a little bit more complicated things. So I hope to see you then. Bye bye.